Fractions are used to describe parts of wholes, mainly. Here I have a circle drawn and I have subdivided the circle into four sections and I have shaded three of them. Now, let's talk about a fraction that would describe the part of the circle which is shaded. Now, notice that three parts are shaded out of all four parts. The fraction describing the situation is three over four or three fourths. Now, the, the top number, the three, is called the numerator of the fraction and the bottom number four is called the denominator. The numerator tells how many items we have and the denominator tells how many items are in a whole. So we have three items shaded out of four items in the entire circle. That's the idea. So three-fourths. Now, fractions actually come in several forms. Uh, these are examples of proper fractions. Now, the, the prevailing characteristic here with proper fractions, take a look at the size of the numerator and denominator in all of these. What you notice is that the numerator is smaller in every one of these. The numerator is smaller than the denominator. You see, so all, in all of these cases, these describe a piece of a whole, a part, a truly a part of a whole because the bottom number describes how many are in a whole, you see, a, a one whole item of whatever we're talking about here, and we're, we have a number in the numerator which is smaller than that, so parts of wholes. These are called improper fractions, and in each one of those, the numerator is a number which is larger than the denominator. That's the prevailing characteristic in improper fractions. It would also be improper if we had a fraction with a numerator which was the same number as the denominator. But most often, if we see improper fractions, they are like this. The numerator is a bigger number than the denominator. Now, in, in improper fractions, these are fractions which are describing a value that is larger than a whole. Because after all, in five-thirds, uh, five is the number of items we have, and a one whole item it contains three items, you see. It contains three of these. So we have more than a whole for all of these. These are examples of mixed numbers. Mixed numbers are numbers that are composed of a whole numbered part and a fraction part. And we read them like this. This is read three and one half. Notice the word and between the whole numbered part and the fraction part. This is read two and two fifths. This is read four and one eighth. This is read one and one fourth. It turns out that improper fractions and mixed numbers uh, can be describing the same value. And let's take a look at that situation. I have drawn here uh, three circles. And in this circle, I have divided uh, into four parts. In fact, in all of them, I've divided the circles into four parts. And here, all four parts are shaded. Here, all four parts are shaded. And here, only one of the four parts is shaded. We can actually describe the situation that we see here in two different ways. One having to do with or, or related to the idea of improper fraction and the other having to do with the notion of mixed number. Let's, let's take a look at what I'm talking about. If we think about the number of little pieces that are shaded, the number of fourths that are shaded, I have four fourths here, another four fourths here for a total of eight fourths that are shaded in those two circles, and another one-fourth over here. So that's a total of nine-fourths that are shaded in all three circles. So nine-fourths is an improper fraction that can be used to describe the shaded parts of all of these circles. Now let's look at the situation another way. We've got, let's see, we've got uh, one whole circle shaded here, we've got one whole circle here, that's two whole circles, plus we've got one-fourth of another circle. So we have two and one-fourth circles that are shaded. So the shaded portions of these circles can be described using the mixed number two and one-fourth. Now, if it is the case that nine-fourths can be replaced by or has the same value as, or is equal to, two and one-fourth, then there must be a way for us to convert nine-fourths into two and one-fourth 
and a way for us to convert 2 and 1 fourth into 9 fourths. And let's talk about that a little bit. There are a couple of ways of looking at the situation going in that direction. That is, in changing 9 fourths to 2 and a quarter, 2 and 1 fourth, we can think this way. We can think, well, gee, let's, let's look at the circles for a moment. Here, the shaded business can be described as 4 fourths. If we were going to write a fraction involving this, because after all, we have four shaded uh, regions out of a total of four in the whole circle. And here for this other one, we also have four fourths, you see, for the shaded part. And in the third circle, we have one fourth. Now, four fourths is the whole circle that's shaded here. And four fourths here is the whole circle. We have one circle here, one whole circle here, and one fourth of a circle here. So we have two and one fourth. See, two and one fourth. But there must be a better way to show it. This is a nice little illustration, but maybe there's another way, and there certainly is. And that way is an arithmetic process. And it's a process that works like this. Remember in the last chapter when we talked about whole numbers, we said that in the division process, we can request the division of whole numbers using a fraction. And if we just think about it like that, think about the fraction like that. This is 9 divided by 4. You see now, so this is a fraction bar but it also is a request for division, or it can be thought of like that, in order to make the change from improper fraction to mixed numbers. So we have, let's see, 9 divided by 4. Well, that's 4 into 9. Let's see, 4 into 9 goes 2 times. 2 times 4 is 8. We subtract and get 1. So we have two holes, you see, in this process, but one left over. So we have 2 with 1 left over. Now that leftover one, the remainder, is written on top of the divisor to complete the fraction part of our mixed number. So this is written as 1 fourth, 2 and 1 fourth, you see. So we have a whole numbered part and a fraction part. The fraction part comes from the remainder over the divisor in this uh, situation. So a good way then to change a, an improper fraction to a mixed number. Now let's go back the other way. In going the other way, in changing a mixed number to an improper fraction, once again, we can, we can think in several different ways. The 2 that we have here, we could subdivide that into 1 and 1 and 1 fourth. You see, and if we want to describe this in terms of fourths, fourths you see, we're talking about the entire circle or 4 fourths of the circle, 4 fourths of this circle and 1 fourth and 4 for how many fourths do we have? You see, we have a total of nine fourths in this uh, situation. That's a way to look at it. But I think a better way is like this. We could actually say that, well, I'm going to, I'll show you the fast track way uh, here, and then we'll, we'll talk about it a little bit. But it's, it's to multiply four times two to get eight, and then add one. So it's, you're kind of going like this, four times two, to get 8, and then you add the 1 to get 9 fourths. That's the, that's the manipulative process. When you multiply 4 times 2 to get 8, what you're doing is you're calculating the number of fourths there are in 2. You see, every one of these rascals, every one of these whole numbers, every whole number that's in 2 has 4 fourths. So the total number of fourths that we have are we have a fourth, we have four fourths in every one of these. So four times two would be eight fourths for the, the two in the whole numbered part. And then we add the one fourth for a total of nine fourths describing all of the shaded regions. Okay, let's practice the idea of changing from mixed number to improper fraction, improper fraction to mixed number. In these, we want to change. Uh,